What's up, everybody? Prefix Wiz coming back at you with another Unity tutorial. Today, continuing our series on the Unity GUI, we're going to talk about the input field. And that starts right now. Double digit thousands. Unity GUI and the input field. Let's go ahead and open up Unity. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just right click UI. We're going to go ahead and create a canvas in the hierarchy. Inside this canvas, I always like to make a panel first. And as a child of the panel, we're going to go ahead and do a UI and we'll do an input field. Let's go ahead and check out the children of the input field UI component. We have the placeholder and we have the text. Now, a placeholder is exactly that. So it's just kind of telling them a little bit about what you want them to put in this field. Then, of course, you have the text, and this is the text that they will actually enter into your project at runtime. So if we were to hit play, our placeholder says it wants a name. Let's give it a name. Let's give them prefix whiz. So the text is a regular text component. It's just storing the information. Let's go ahead and click on the input field, and let's go over to the inspector. So as you can see, it has a regular rec transform like other UI elements do. And then we have an image script, and this is obviously just to display it. And of course, we have the input field. Now let's go down the input field. Obviously, the interactable is whether you're going to be able to input something into that field or not. Let's say you decide to make it non-interactable. So let's uncheck it. Let's go over here, and you'll see that it grayed out. And we are unable to use it because it is disabled at the moment. But if we were to check the box and make it interactable, then we can go ahead and type in what we want. I'll put a link in the description for the transition and navigation as it's similar to the Unity UI button tutorial that I did previously. All right, so moving down to the actual text component. The text component is just asking, look, what text in this input field are we referencing? So if there is a text component, go ahead and reference it here. As we type down here in the game scene in the input field, you'll see it populate in the text component input field in the inspector. And now the character limit, we could set it today to five. And now they will only be able to type up to five characters in that space. And you can set that limit to whatever best fits your project. And then you have the, the default is zero. And if you put zero in there, that means it's unlimited. You can put as much as you want in there. All right, um, content type. You have standard, which is alphanumeric characters with as many punctuations as necessary. And then, of course, you have autocorrected, where if you want the field to be autocorrected, you have integer number. In this field, let's say instead of the name, you wanted a house number. So that would be like one, two, three, four, whatever lane. It knows that it's looking for integer numbers. But let's say you wanted uh, it's looking for a decimal because it knows the answer needs to be a decimal or whatever you place in there has to have a decimal point. You can't put a period in there with an integer number, but if you change this to a decimal number, you'll be able to 1, 2, 3, 4, point 1. And alphanumeric suggests that you're able to use both letters and numbers. And of course, name. When you use name, it's only going to let you use letters, and it's automatically going to capitalize the first letter. Here, we're just going to type prefix, but I'm going to use a lowercase p, and it should automatically make it a capital P. All right, and the email address, it will allow you to use alphanumeric text in addition to periods and at symbols. So for instance, me at you.com. All right, so using the password, it will allow you to use the alphanumeric characters in addition to special characters. So you can see that I typed prefix one, two, three, four, and let's put an exclamation point at the end. That's a password. And my password is here, but it is hidden. All right, and let's go to pin. Now, pin is the same concept as password, except for it only allows you to use numbers. And then, of course, there's custom. Now, under custom, you're able to mix and match any of these presets that Unity already has built in to better suit your project. A single line allows you only to enter information on a single line. It'll never go into multiple lines. And then multi-line submit means that you can hit the return or enter key to go to the next line and continue typing. And then multi-line new line allows you to continuously type and it will automatically move to the next line when there's no space available at the end of the line. All right, then you have the placeholder. That's the placeholder text that we talked about earlier. Then you have the caret blink rate. Okay, so in here you see this little blinking line, your position currently within the text field. All right, and you can increase the blink rate to blink a lot faster. 
and you can increase the width. All right, and then you can also do a custom carrot color where right now it's black, but let's say we want red. And then you have the selection color. Now the selection color is just if you went in and you highlighted or control A to highlight everything within that text field, it's gonna show up in the selection color that you preset. And we have the hide mobile input. And what this does is it hides the native input field attached to the on-screen keyboard on mobile devices, but this only works for the iOS at the moment. And the read only is exactly that read only. It only allows you to look or read or display the information. It does not allow you to change the information. Okay, and the last two things are on value changed and on end edit. This fires off an event anytime that you change what's going on inside this field. So if you type a letter or you type a number, it changed what's in that field. So whatever you whatever event that you decide to place in there, whatever function, it will fire that function. And on end edit is the same concept. When you're finished, if you click out of the box or you hit escape or you hit submit, it will fire the function that you have available on the on end edit. Thank you for watching this video. It's just a very simple input field. It shows you how to use it and what it does and how you can make it work in your project. Hopefully that helped you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. In either case, subscribe. Thank you.